Okay, so let's get started. Basically, we can start from, from the progress. So what we have right now is uh, we have a problem with data uploading to Dataverse, which we thought we will use. We might use it in the future. But right now we have the data pre-processed and uh, uploaded to Google Compute Platform. And uh, it is recommended to move to Dataverse, but I think we will do this when we have time. And I think this should not be a top priority because we can proceed with, with the way it is right now, with Google uh, Platform. And it will simplify our life if we will use uh, Google Collab for our experiments. So we have the data, uh, some basic preprocessing. Uh, I used two data sets so far. The one is from Kaggle and another is uh, coronavirus related data set. Uh, some, some data set from Russia. Um, it is the good thing is it's saved as DCOM and processed uh, image. And I have applied uh, long window, CT long window for to the date range. Um, yeah, I probably will open notebook to show you this. I'm not sure. Did you check the pre-processing notebooks? Let me share the screen. And by the way, we don't have a lot of people, so you can all unmute. It's fine. <clears throat> so whenever you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me. So uh, I checked the data and uh, there are two data sets that are ready to be used right now. It's this uh, from Kaggle and another one. I call it, it's called COVID-1110, uh, this one. And after applying the Slang window, it has been saved as uh, NumPy array. In some, like in one data set, it's, the data is stored like each slice is a separate file in another data set is stored as a one decom is a whole scan 3d scan but if when i pre-processed it and saved this numpy and numpy uh, objects one object is one full scan meaning one object one saved file is scan containing many slices like all the slices of the patient so what we can do right now, like where do we go from, from this? From the top of my head, uh, I put a little list of things we can work on, which is, uh, so I found this Google Collab and fixed it a little bit, made, made it running. So now it's running, it's training, and this is great, but uh, it's only first step, which is training of the unsupervised model or semi-supervised model. And second step is take this model and then uh, fine tune on target task, like a task of classifying, I don't know, cats and dogs, stuff like this. You have a, do you have a list of the fixes you had to make? Uh, no, but here I think it's just, just don't. This function had to have this parameter, uh, world size, uh, which is, so I have added it here in this cell and then, uh, here I would edit here. I would uh, no no it's not here. Just a moment. Here I would initialize it. So I have added these two rows, and then also added this make dears because the folder for storing uh, model should exist, and without it it will crash. So it's really just a few things. But the thing is, notebook is public and it's running. What was running is a similarity model, the unsupervised part. But there is a second part. It also here in the code, it just didn't run. Maybe it will require some fixes, which will take the model from checkpoint and then uh, run logistic regression on the, like with the frozen uh, body of the model. Like in the embedding module, it's going to be frozen and then classifier is chained and they measure accuracy. By the way, they report uh, training accuracy while training, and then they also report uh, report validation accuracy. So, anyway, the I think the first task is run this similar uh, SimCLR experiment 
in full, including transfer learning. And good thing is you can use Google Colab for that. I think there are some free uh, GPU time available for everyone. So it's pretty a pretty good deal. I think we also should get this running on our machine. I don't know what machines do you have, guys? Uh, my machine is not very powerful for machine learning, but it has like a decent uh, GPU. It's laptop, but uh, pretty decent GPU. So I thought about trying to run it locally to see just how good it's working comparing to Google Collab. So maybe I will do this, but this is not a priority, running locally. Uh, okay. Okay, so we have another guy joined. Hello. Uh, I, I also try to run the notebook, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little frustrated because the losses could not cover the, it's stuck at around four point zero something. Is that sorry, sorry, can you repeat it please? The, the, the loss is not decreasing below the uh, 4.0. 4.0. I think that this is more or less what it's supposed to be. Uh, we need to understand the loss. And because it starts way, from five. Uh, we have to check. I think I think that's a good number. 4.0 is it's a good number. I okay. Aha, uh -huh, I remember. Give me a moment. It's a function of the batch size and the temperature. And. Okay. So guys, uh, what I wanted to share is just a moment. Uh, in this repository, they actually shared the experiment result. So we can go and check what is the loss they got there. And let's see. Okay, so in my case, it was around four, and uh, this is. train book so it they didn't reach four neither you see it was like 4.5 4.6 so I bet it's fine uh, the link you can you can find the link when you go to this great repository you can see a reference to the notebook which is not fixed it's crashing and but okay. you, which which is more important, is the standard board. So you can go and compare results. So I think if you didn't get lower of lower than four, it's totally fine. So what I think we can do right now is first one reproduce the whole pipeline when we take the model, train it in semi supervised ways, and use it, froze, freeze, and use it as a pacifier. Then we have to implement documentations for our data. Think discuss, like have some brainstorm meeting to discuss what we will do, what we will try and implement this for our case because our case is a little bit specific because we don't have colors first because we have different data and stuff like this. So we'll have to implement, someone can start working on this. So this is our test that actually we can work in parallel, just uh, like see who, who would like to work on, on what. Now, another thing that we will have to work is data loader, loader and batch generator, because when we have this classical uh, model, CLR, they probably, I didn't get into details, but probably they sample data randomly, right? They take one image, this is positive example. They will take another random image, generate augmentation, and this is going to be negative, right? Uh, I think you are familiar with CLR. In our case, we will not just take randomly. We have uh, layers of or, or or slices of scans, right? Of 3D scans. So we will take uh, random 
scan. And then we have to take positive and negative sample from the same uh, scan, different slices from the same scan. So we take few slices. From first slice, we generate augmentations, and these augmentations, uh, together with ANCH, are going to form positive pairs. And then we take any, uh, take other random slice from the same uh, scan, and this is going to be negative. Together with original ANCH, they form negative pairs, and then we apply the why, why do you want to take the negatives from the same scan? Uh, yeah, because if we take them mind. randomly from other people, like scans from other people, it's going to be very easy to learn. For example, we know where this throat is on this image. Uh, I don't think more on all of the of the images we have throat uh, at the bottom. Uh, I know how how to call it, but like orientation of the person on the scan. Sometimes it's different. Sometimes the shape of of, of person is different. And we want the model uh, predict positive and negative pair, not just by looking at the shape of the body or the orientation of the person, because we want the model to look closely into inside the lungs, learn these features, and use these features to answer a question if it's the same uh, slice, but slightly augmented or or not slightly augmented, or if it's a different slice. So basically, we need to make this task hard for the model. That's the only way for it to use, to learn useful information. Does it make sense? Yes, I understand your logic. Uh, okay, just that I, I don't know. Um, if, if we have the same patterns in different slices of the same person, then I don't know what it will do. We can just try. You mean, but we, uh, you we mean not we have too many negatives. The, the batch size, if, if a batch ah, will no, be no, based on a single person. Uh, we will not have, we will not take all the slices as negatives. We will take a few, few random ones as negatives. And we will take few positives, few augmentation uh, from one from one from one cube from one scan. Then we'll take another few random from from another scan, few positive, few negative uh, samples. So we're not taking all the slices for sure. And also, if that's what you're concerned about, we can introduce some merging, uh, some merging. Like if we are taking slice number twenty-five as an anchor. We should not take 26 or 24 as a negative sample because they're going to be very, very close, right? If that's what you're sure. saying, that's a good idea to implement, and that's another feature of this data sampler. So we have this another task that can be that does not depend on any other task that anyone can start working on, which is creating the data loader that will generate these positive and negative samples from from each uh, from randomly selected scans randomly selected slices of randomly selected scans to form positive and negative pairs. And uh, so we have some things to try here, like number of uh, examples from one scan or this margin that we have just discussed. And we will have to see what does help, what does not help. The same thing with augmentation. We will have a lot of ideas, things that we think might work that should work, and we will have to validate these ideas. And what, am I, what I'm saying here is that we have a very important task here, which is uh, model, model validation. Uh, we can look at the loss, but actually the loss is not informative for us because the fact that model is learning doesn't mean model is learning right features and doesn't mean model is good for transfer learning. As, as we discussed like if we take samples, slices from random scans for positive and negative pairs, the model may just learn the shape of the body, the orientation of the body without even looking in this parenthema. The loss will be dropping uh, like crazy and we will be so happy when we will watch the loss, but when we try to use this to predict uh, pneumonia, it will it will not be a good job and will not be beneficial to use this as transfer learning. So what I'm saying is that we should have another uh, plague external 
module, which is validator. And what validator will do, like, let's say we run this validator every 50 epochs or every five epochs. Uh, it's up to us, right? or every 10 epochs. And this validator, it will take the model, freeze the body, the embedding layers. And then, for example, on 100 or 500 annotated pneumonia images, it will run, run fix the number of epochs, or maybe it will run uh, with early stopping until early stopping point is reached. This is going to run very fast, so don't be scared that we have kind of inception training of one model within training of another model. But this this training inside validator will run super fast because we only training the classifier head. So every 10 epochs, we freeze the our big model and we train the classifier to predict pneumonia just by looking at few thousand images. And we see how much, how good is it doing. And we plot this and we'll be using that metric to judge, to, to, to say, to see if the model is performing good. If, if model is performing good as a transfer, transfer learning candidate. Uh, does it make sense what I'm saying here? Can, can you explain it once more? Can you explain it once more? Yeah, so here all these steps are related to training the semi-supervised model, right? The model that is learning on auxiliary, like auto-generated labels. Mm -hmm. In our case, these labels are whether uh, the image is positive or negative in the pair. Right. And this labels and this model will not help us directly to classify pneumonia. What we'll do to classify, to classify pneumonia or anything else, we need to take the model and do the transfer learning, right? We freeze this model, the embedding layers, and mm -hmm. we only train the classifier. Mm -hmm. And what we hope and we, what we aim to achieve is have a very good big model that can be fine-tuned on very limited data set and still achieve good accuracy. So our ultimate goal is later add as many data as possible from our other data sets and train it so much that we can later take this uh, model, we will publish it and we can take this model and uh, use any task related to lung city, whether it's cancer detection or classification, whether it's pneumonia, whether it's COVID okay. or anything else. And we use on the actual real task, which is classification and detection. So uh, our ultimate goal is make this model a good transfer learning candidate. So when we are learning this transfer learning, uh, when we are learning this big SimCLR model, it's not enough to just look at the loss because loss can be dropping if the model is good at uh, different, differentiating. Yes, positive catching positive. the arbitrariness. Catching the Sorry. artifacts even. So model can be good if even if we get get the bond density, which is not our purpose, right? Exactly, exactly. Maybe it will it's looking on the patient uh, or the body shape or body uh, position, orientation. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, the only way we can measure if the, this model is good as transfer learning is do this transfer learning task. Um, by that I mean every, let's say every 10 epochs, we take this model and fine tune, like make a copy of this model, of course, uh, or freeze the, the body. Fine tune on another task, like having 100 or a few, a few thousand uh, labeled cancer or labeled pneumonia Im images. We fine tune and we see how, what is the score, what is the accuracy the model can achieve when this pre-chained body is used. And we do this every 10 epochs. And then on the graph, we will see how is it improving? How is it improving? How is it improving? And then we try one augmentation technique, another one, third, fourth, like any ideas we can brainstorm, we can try different things. And the most important thing, we will have actual metric that will answer, that will tell us, is this augmentation technique works better or worse? Same thing with data loader, because it's in tests like this, when we have, uh, this same is network or triplet loss uh, or something similar to triplet loss. As, as far as I know, uh, tuning the batch and uh, batch forming logic is very important. And again, we will be able to, to tune, to, to play with these options, and we will have where to look to see if it's, if it's working better or not. 
So, but it's not uh, actually the code that he, that uh, the CMCR code is not triplet lost. I think it's pairwise, just to be on the same page. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not triplet lost, but in general they are related. Okay. The idea is very similar. We are sure. um, minimizing loss. Uh, uh, do you want to, to use di diff different construct co contrastive? Uh, uh, Framework, or do you think SimCLR is okay and we use it? No, I think I think SimCLR is a good. I think similar SimCLR is a good shot. I did check uh, answer, but I think it's a good uh, thing to try. So I would, uh, yeah. But for there are other things that we will have like different hyperparameters and different approaches, like augmentation mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. forming batches. And what I'm saying is that we'll need to to see how good is it performing and the loss is not enough. We have to see the accuracy on the actual task. And for that, we can test, we can take data from the, this target Kaggle competition, mm -hmm. or we can look for other competitions that were, uh, that fits better to the data that we have, because in this competition, we have also tabular data, but what we want to see is how good is our computer vision without, uh, in, independent from the tab any tabular data, and no, but I don't understand. So I I missed uh, the last stage. What we want to do in the last in the model validation? I thought you wanted to train a predictor with the feature extractor from the exactly former exactly. Stage. It's just uh, this. So how you? Uh, this challenge, which we considering, which because just because it's running right now, is just it has both mm -hmm. images and also some tabular data. So if we pretend, the ah, model, yeah. it will it, it just complicates the validation a little bit. If we take some other little data set that will have solely image data and, and classifier, like for example this one, it, but, but it you has, need to, but but you mean with labels. Yeah, exactly. We take this with labels. We oh, take okay. that frozen okay. model, right? We take the frozen, it, for okay. example, this one. It's only three gigabytes, three and a half. It's very little comparing to our data sets that are like hundreds of gigabytes. So it's it looks like a very good thing to where we can validate our model. So we will check notebooks. We will check what does what did people try. We can uh, take some like best solution. That, that didn't involve assembly of models that involved only single model. And we start from that from that solution. For example, here they have the the score, leaderboard scored, and they did transfer learning from Coco dataset. So we just take the script, uh, modify it accordingly, and then see what is the leaderboard score we will get, what is the accuracy we will get if we use our wonderful model as a pre-training technique. So for this, we can actually implement different validators. So of course, of course, with, with a little team and with a team of volunteers, we should start with little steps and start to concentrate, focus on those that are critical. So it's critical to have at least one validator. When we have the validator, uh, we are good with to tune augmentation data loader and see how, what, how much can we squeeze. And if we squeeze something and we can see that there are results, we can uh, share this with the community and we'll get, we can get more people involved and then we can implement more validators, put more data uh, into our pipeline and build even better model. So, but like the key steps or key tests that I can see are this for reproducing SimCLR then like with default data. And basically they're going to be the last and the most important step, step which is training SimCLR on, on medical data. Hi, this is Siddhartha. Sorry, I joined like yeah, 10 sure. minutes. Hi. So, um, yeah, I, uh, you know, my background is that I'm more of like Django, you know, web developer, but I'm really interested in, you know, machine learning and uh, this deep learning. So, um, in, in my work, I, I work uh, with uh, group that does like deep learning on MRI images. And I, I have created the interface um, where you can navigate it using Angular and Django. So uh, I uh, and also created the portal for Corona Hawaii for the spike protein explorer. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, but 
I would like to, you know, take up some task. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm still like new to the whole, you know, deep learning, machine learning thing. I'm, I know what it is, but I have not actually used it. So, um, did you take some courses on this? Yeah, I've taken like uh, gone through the deep learning AI uh, courses in uh, Coursera. So I'm like familiar with the different uh, neural networks, but it's not that I've ap applied it on anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I can pick it up, but but yeah, I mean that's I just wanted to know where I am. And, you know. uh, well, there are most of these tasks are highly engineering tasks, so there no problem that you lacking experiences in machine uh, experience in machine learning no problem at all because most of this is engineering and software development so i think you're going to be good here and yeah i also started as a web developer many years ago so it should, should not be a problem at all so okay so if you can like uh, you know suggest a specific task and also like uh, you know kind of fresh it out like this is what i need to do then maybe i could try Doing that. I'll try try to write on Google Colab and my local machine. I haven't yet tried it. I've gone through the notebook, mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't actually uh, run it on Google. Uh, Colab. I would suggest uh, to in the following way. You guys tell me what you want to work on. This step, like we all have to do, because we all have to make sure it's, the code is running for you. Like make a copy of Google notebook and make sure you can you can run it and the whole pipeline. And then these tasks. Uh, just let me know who is interested to take which task. And it it uh, needs to be managed because the tasks are allegedly serial and we need to plan how to make them parallel. I mean, the, the, for, for example, uh, the data loader should need to call the augmentation, but I think we, in order to make it parallel, we, should, we can have one person start to make augmentation that is disconnected to the data loader and then to uh, well uh, for the data loader was to uh, for, just wanted to say that data loader like this seems our default repository they have some augmentation they use some augmentation so you can concentrate on data loader and use default augmentation method and then we'll just replace once this piece is ready we just plug it in replace it here and we are good to go so these are two are not related and the model validator is something again can be done totally in parallel like start with, for example with this kaggle challenge and see what did people try what did they achieve and which what technique can we use to try out our model for transfer learning so, Saria, can you do one thing? Uh, can you just outline the steps, right? Or oh, these would be the steps, and you guys need to look into this particular aspect, and you can fill in there. So that, if you can train us that way, that will be good. Mm -hmm. So you you will just write or type in the few steps that you guys need to do do this, because we I know even I know everything because I have seen it. But because I have not used CMS CLI, so I, I just get scared that I should not do any mistakes. So if, okay. if, you, if you can make that kind of guidelines for us, or oh, you guys do this, we'll meet within two days, and then I'll see to it. Some, something, something? Yeah, sure. I will, uh, I will check with guys uh, about what is the uh, tool we should use for tasks, and then I will fill, I will fill in information for all these tasks. Right. So that will be good. It will help us. Just serve us as a supervisor, <laughs> to me at least. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and of course, right now, it's, it's my, this list is in my private uh, notebook, and I will share this publicly. Uh, but basically, these are the stuff that we have right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so well, if you want to work on something, on some specific task of this, just let me know. And but. Uh, in any case, make sure this one. So when you say model validator on medical data, so we need to get other data sets, right? Yeah, I would suggest, uh, I would suggest this one, uh, sorry, this one, because it has, it's really small data set, only 3.6 gigabytes. And I, I didn't check into details, but I, I guess it's a classification task. So basically, learn about this challenge. Learn more about this challenge. See what did people try. Then, like, reproduce some of of this 
find something that for you, in your opinion, looks like a best solution, does not involve like assembly, some uh, crazy engineering, something where we can plug in our model and see how does it improve the score. I mean, okay. when we plug in our model, this is a validator. And then, yeah, make it like a, then we'll have to think how to write like a function which we call, we pass the path to our model, and the validator will load this model, freeze, and uh, train and return the score. What did we achieve at the end? Okay, I can look into that. Uh, I, I can go through whole whatever RSNA data sets are there and I can see into what people have and which where we can apply our model over there. And Great. That I can look into, but if I do a mistake, help me out. Okay. Of course, yeah, of course, I'm here to help. Sure. Anasha, uh, would you like to take this one, data loader? Yes. Yes, I might need some guidance from you, but uh, okay, this is uh, basically I need to study PyTorch data loader, but I think it can be done. It is manageable. So but, uh, I am ready to help. I have experience with that, uh, so I'm ready to help. Okay. And I will probably so be it. also uh, working on everything by a little bit. First, I will start by writing these tests publicly and then I will probably also be working with data loaders, so I will check with you how we can synchronize our work. And I think the augmentation is, or I can work on augmentations. Yeah, I can work on augmentations. I have, if anyone, does anyone want to take this one? Um, I, oh, sorry, I continue. Um, uh, can I take the train simpler on, on our data because I have access to our data set? The last Sorry, one. Can you can you repeat the question? Uh, can I can I take the last one, the train simpler on our data because uh, I have access to. The yes, the thing is, this one is actually this one uh, depends on all other steps. Like we can do this when we have validators, but can we can work when we have the data load. Actually, you can start. You can start working on this one, changing the pipeline so it will load our data. Yeah. And so we will know exactly where to plug in our data loader, where we will plug in our validator. So yeah, you can start here. It's going to be, it's just, you will not be able to finish it and run it without all other steps, but at least uh, they're going to be ready. Like some boiler that code should be ready. And- uh, I will do that. Okay, and now, and also, there is no any issue if if someone is working on a task and you will work on it as well. It's not the problem at all. We will later decide how we'll merge the, the work or sometimes someone will not have time and maybe other one will have time to complete. So it's not a problem if something is already worked on that. Okay. Okay, and the last uh, comment is let's we will take a fork of this repository, SimCLR, and let's keep it as clean as possible, meaning let's try to keep our code separately. So if guys here fix something, implement some new features, something cool, we can pull the latest. If we can see that we can pull and merge. So we will pull into our fork and all our code is going to be stored in this repository separately. Okay, so, so um, yeah. Yeah, hi. Uh, I was wondering if I can do something like augmentation or data loader and uh, something that you can also like, uh, you know, kind of help me get started. And so uh, mm -hmm. just to confirm, like, so it is a common repository that we are all working on. We're not like forking individually, I'm sure. Like, uh, I guess like, so there's one fork and we all have branches in that or how is that? Right now we don't have branches, so you can push to master, but later, once it, it grows, probably we will have a pull request approach. Of, of merging, but right now just feel free to, to push there. And in terms of task, uh, yeah, you can start from any of those. I will put more details and uh, we can meet, discuss details, or if you have any questions or problems, I'm happy to meet and help. Uh, guys, this meeting is uh, less than one minute to be over. So uh, if you have more questions, just feel free to reach in the Slack in shared channel or privately, but in shared channel. So if anyone else will have the same question, he will see or she will see the answer.
Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.